Why, hello there, I'm Sandy Alnock. Welcome to my YouTube channel where today we're going to the Smithsonian, to the Natural History Museum, where I was drawing dinosaur bones. They have Fossil Hall, which is really cool, full of big giant dinosaurs, as you see. And I took a sketchbook and a pencil and a pen and was working on some drawings. Lots of children were there and came by to see what I was doing and I taught some drawing techniques that I thought I would share with you here on YouTube. If you're one of the kids that came by, make sure you leave a comment and say hello. I'd love to say hello back to you. And there are things other than dinosaurs in the museum. You can see there's a big uh, brown bear there. There's also an elephant in the foyer as you come in. So let's do some drawing, shall we? The giant T-Rex in the fossil hall is munching down on a triceratops that's laying on the ground. And I decided that I was going to draw these toes. I thought they would be kind of fun to do and a more limited thing to draw rather than a full dinosaur because I am visiting family. I'm drawing in the bedroom that I'm staying at in my, in my sister's house. And uh, yeah, so I don't really have my normal video set up. So we're trying our best here to get you some drawing ideas. So what I was showing the kids is first I draw very loosely in pencil and I look for the big shapes. So I'm looking for the shape of the toes, the whole hand or foot or whatever it is, and then break that into smaller shapes. So there's, you know, like a couple of rectangles that make each one of the fingers or the toes. And I look for what direction they go and what kind of space is in between them. I'm not really worried about getting everything perfect at this stage, just looking for some loose pencil lines. And then I can start in with my pen. Now each one of these sketches that I showed you at the beginning was done really quickly. They were like 15 or 20 minutes. I didn't want to spend a lot of time because usually I was standing and holding my sketchbook and not really sitting down in a relaxed situation. It's a lot easier to draw when you're in a relaxed situation. But once I start in with the pen, I can start putting detail in. So I'm looking at more of the smaller specific shapes within the, each of the toes. So there's some toes that have horizontal bands in them, or they have kind of a curvy shape on one side or the other. These bones, the top part of each of the toes is kind of an hourglass, or you could think of it like an apple that you've been biting around the middle and it gets skinnier in the middle. So look for shapes of things and draw them next to each other. And you can see how high up one shape starts next to the other shape next to it. And that gives you kind of the basis for a quick sketch. This is not gonna be anatomically correct or anything, but it's gonna be close. It's gonna look like a dinosaur foot. Now, when I was doing this portion in the museum, I usually would talk to kids about what I was doing or how I was thinking about it because a lot of kids would come by and they'd see part of the drawing and they'd say, how did you do that? And I would start on a new part of the drawing so I could show them how to do the shapes. And what I realized is it would be really fun to do some drawing with the kids. So what I ended up doing as I worked my way through all those sketches was to invite some of the kids. If they looked like they were really interested in art, I invited them to join me in the drawing. And so I would get the main part of the drawing done and then I would use this eraser. It's called a kneaded eraser, K-N-E-A-D-E-D, -E -E like with you knead bread. And I erased some of those pencil lines so I can then focus on the pen lines. And I would put in some of the main details and then I would let the kids help with putting in the shading because that's the part that seemed to fascinate a lot of the kids. So I would just kind of put that in. Now, for those who watch my channel all the time and are wondering, I am still at my mom's. I was supposed to be home by now, but mom has not been doing well and we are just kind of waiting to see what's gonna happen. Mom didn't want me to leave, she wanted me to stay. And so I extended my trip. I am ah, excited to spend more time with my family, but sad to miss my puppies at home and that sort of thing. But you know, you gotta do what you gotta do. So I am still here with my 
my mom. And if you want more information, maybe I'll update the blog post or something with a little more detail about what's going on. But let's get back to dinosaurs, because now we're on to the shading portion. And this is where I had kids help me. I would show them how to do these parallel lines. And the parallel lines are called hatching. It's a technique artists have used for centuries. Now hatching is just making lines. And what I like to do with my drawings is kind of keep most of the lines going the same direction. So it sort of brings some unity to the whole drawing, but you can make them go any direction you want. There's sometimes that I use heavier pressure and I push harder and that gives me a thicker line. Or I put the lines closer together and that gives me a darker value or a darker color. And here when I'm going to put a dark space in between the toes, I can make the lines really close together and then the toes start to separate from each other. But then when I get into an area where there's light hitting the toes, I don't want as many lines on it. I want less lines or I want them further apart or use lighter pressure. And so what I had some of the kids do is to try, you know, one of the toes or one of the bones I had drawn and just put some lines in and see if they could make a light value and a dark value. Because a light value has light shining on it and a dark value is in shadow. And that starts to give your drawing some realism and some depth. It looks like it's touchable, it's rounded, and you have different, different shapes that have light hitting them. And that's what we had a lot of fun with. A lot of the kids worked on the bear. So if you worked on the bear, make sure you comment that you worked on the bear with me. And for those who worked on the elephant, make sure you comment, because I did a little bit of the drawing with kids helping out on the dinosaurs, but I did a bunch of it with a, a lot more kids doing the other animals because I was sitting down and everybody could get to my sketchbook easier. But when I was drawing the dinosaurs, there's not a lot of places to sit where kids could come and really see what I was doing and look over my shoulder or anything. So that wasn't as easy to do. But you can do this from dinosaurs in a museum in your town wherever you live. If you go visit Washington DC, you can go draw in the dinosaur hall or the, they call it the fossil hall. It has all these uh, fossils in it. The museum also has a whole area all about oceans and there's things about uh, the evolution of man going from, uh, you know, all, all throughout the centuries and centuries of time. There is so much to learn and there's a lot of great information for kids of all ages. So I highly recommend the Natural History Museum. I used to go there as a kid all the time because I lived nearby and we had lots of school field trips that went there. And on the day that I went this year, it was very crowded with school kids because it was just before Easter and lots and lots of kids came. Some of it was family, some of it was classes, but it's a whole lot of fun. So on this top part, uh, there is more light, but there's also these shapes that you can see in that top bone. And what I'm doing is making shapes out of my blocks of lines. So just because you're making lines doesn't mean it can't have a shape to it. It's just a matter of thinking through where you're putting the lines. And when I want to put a not as dark color, I go over the lines that are already there, but with the lines spread out more far apart so that I get some dark shadows and some less dark shadows. But always making sure I pay attention where I want to keep some bright light hitting the drawing because that bright light area will be white paper. A drawing like this could be finished later on at home if you want to add some color to it, colored pencil or some watercolors or markers, and then you'd have a finished drawing in color, but you don't have to take the color with you to the museum. So if you decide to try it, please do email me a picture of your dinosaur toe drawings, or you can have your parents post them on social media and tag me because I'd love to see what you draw. Thanks for visiting my channel. I will see you guys another time. Bye-bye.